know, there are different approaches. I always think about a metastatic disease as running a marathon. We need the right pace and the right, the right course. And so, sometimes you need to sprint, right? Sometimes you need more intense regimens for yeah. whatever reason. And uh, I think it's always a struggle. What, what is it that we would start off with? I uh, think for uh, one of the other things, uh, for AIM, I foster mite and adromycin. The only time I've used it for a metastatic setting is if there are a lot of symptoms, obviously. Yeah, yeah. If I need to shrink quickly to get the symptoms out. But um, otherwise, the standard of care right now is adromycin if patients can tolerate it, if they don't have any cardiac history. Mm -hmm. And then with olaritumab, that's the standard of care. Yeah. And then subsequent therapies. Most of my patients with metastatic disease get six, seven lines yeah. of therapy, but it just depends on how you sequence yeah. them. Yeah, I, um, I might just push back a little bit. Lots of. <laughs> 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 setting you up for that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so doxorubicin is, is clearly the most, act, the most active drug in frontline therapy for metastatic sarcoma. And I'm speaking just in generalities. Of course, every patient is an individual and we make decisions based on individual situations. But um, as Bill mentioned, the, there is uh, survival advantage, doxorubicin plus ifosfamide. Um, seemingly, it may not be statistically significant in, in studies, but it's an acceptable frontline regimen uh, for meta in the metastatic setting. Um, doxorubicin olera, also an acceptable regimen in the frontline setting with the survival benefit from the study. And so again, we, when we see a patient with metastatic disease, uh, we look uh, at the patient, not that there's a 90% chance that you're not going to survive this. We look at the patient that there's a 10% chance that you may live more than 10 years. But that's and if, exactly what I said. If you look at, right? if you look at most of, if you look at most of the sarcoma subtypes, long-term survival at at 10 years may be as high as 20% in the adult rhabdomyosarcoma patients. And these are the patients that respond to chemotherapy and are able to go on to some type of consolidative, localized, oligometastatic resections. And so when we see, see these patients, just like that you do, we treat aggressively. And so we treat with doxorubicin and ifosfamide, and if the patient's eligible for the trial, doxorubicin plus ifosfamide plus olera with the idea of getting the best response possible and then if the patient is able to get into an oligometastatic situation, then have lung nodules resected, have liver lesions resected or ablated, uh, if you're able to render the patient completely NED uh, for, for, um, for, for metastatic but disease. But for a patient with widely metastatic disease where mm -hmm. resection is not possible, would you give AIM at any point? Absolutely. Resection may so, be possible with a complete response in, in the majority of the areas. I, 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 disagree, I think I disagree because ifosm, addition of ifosfamide to adromycin, it more than doubles the toxicity. I mean, it is a very, very difficult regimen. Uh, I think um, tolerability is, a massive, uh, is of massive importance to a lot of my patients as well. Now, that being said, sarcoma patients are a very, very heterogeneous group of patients, right? You have patients in their teens, and you have patients in their 80s, right? And so clearly that take, uh, plays a major role, but I think it depends largely what the patient feels. And so I have, I have given metastatic patients AIM if we think that we can get them to, to surgery to resect. But I think if uh, in a situation where surgery really is not feasible, um, I think that going more gently with a, a drug that actually can increase overall survival may be more effective in that regard. Oh, I, I agree completely, and go ahead. I agree with you, John, on one point, <laughs> and that is if Just I have point. a synovial sarcoma, <laughs> they will definitely get ifosfamide adromycin, right. even if they have metastatic disease, even if they have bone disease, right? So those are the one group of patients that will always get the ifosfamide. But the other patients in their 60s and 70s who've had, um, who have bone to, you know, disease, liver, lung, and all of those things, um, we have to have a conversation. Sure. Most patients will Absolutely. say, I do not want the ifosfamide, especially if they're older than 65, you'll mm -hmm. get a lot of side effects. But I do agree on one point. I think I, I'm agreeing with you completely. <laughs> okay. and this, is a, this is a long conversation that yeah. I have with patients, but, and we're talking about metastatic patients. And if you look at the retrospective reviews with all of their biases, mm -hmm. 
the, there are patients with metastatic disease that are long-term survivors. Yes, I agree. And there's data in the surgical literature and data in the interventional radiology literature that those patients who are going to live longer with those procedures are the ones who are responding to chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So I choose the regimen that's most likely and has the highest probability of response in order to offer those consolidative procedures. And it's, you know, it's also supported to some degree by the doxorubicin plus ifosfamide by, versus doxorubicin study. The PFS was statistically higher with the combination. The response rate was doubled with the com combination. And the overall survival was 9% longer, 9% higher for the patients that got the combination. We're talking overall survival. Although the p-value fell a little short, the trend is but there. What's the expense? So, so. All right, so to, to use your logic, the Doxolera study improved response rate, improved progression-free survival, but had a massive improvement in overall survival. Uh, that wasn't the two months that was seen with the Dox-IFOS, but instead 11.8 months. And so. Do, who, in, in your clinic, who do you give oleratumab to, if anybody? I try to give it to any patient I'm giving doxorubicin to. In my opinion, doxorubicin olera combination right. in my clinic has replaced doxorubicin. I don't use single agent doxorubicin no. anymore. Right. I think you met, I think you said that yesterday in yes. your education session. I did. Mm -hmm. And so. Doxorubicin olera has not been compared head to head to doxorubicin ifosfamide. So there's a little bit of a gray area as to which one is superior. So you and you can't give... compare the two studies. So in my practice, I try to give doxorubicin plus ifosfamide plus olera because I think that gives the best chance for an individual patient. As part of for... a clinical trial or off label? As part of a clinical trial, if the patient's eligible, if not, then it's an off-label discussion.